Hello and welcome back to creating a simple pour effect. In the last video, we started the functionality in our stream script. And in this video, we're gonna finish out both the stream and the pour detector. Not much else to say, so let's get right to it. And here we are within the stream script where we're gonna to need to create some additional variables. We're going to need one for our particle system and another for our routine that we're gonna be storing once we begin the pour and then we'll be ending it once we begin ending the pour. And we'll start right down here below our line renderer and it will be a private particle system. And we'll call it splash particle. And then we'll be creating a private coroutine that we'll just call pour routine. And then let's go to the bottom of our script here so we can write the signatures for the additional functions we're going to need. Well, we'll need some up here too, so we'll start here. And it'll be a public function just called end. It's gonna be empty for right now, and this is gonna mimic the same structure as the begin and begin pour, where we have a public void and then a private coroutine. So then we'll have a private coroutine that we'll call end pour. Now let's go to the bottom of our script and let's create the function for animating our position. And this is pretty simple. So we'll just write public void animate to position. It's gonna follow a similar structure to our move to position where we have an index and a target position. We'll have two more functions here. One for testing to see if a position on our line render has met its position that it's animating towards. And this is so when we know when the end of our line render gets down to the ground, we can check to see if it's reached that position, as well as the same once we end the pour and then we want to animate the start position of the line render down to the ground. And it'll just be a private bool, and we'll just call it has reached position. Similar structure to before, have an index, and target position. And we'll just return false for now. And then we'll scroll down because we just need to create one more coroutine and then we'll begin to fill all this out. And it'll be a private coroutine that we'll call update particle. And this is just going to manage the position of our splash particle. Okay, that's about it for all of our function signatures. We're gonna start from the top and begin to work our way down because there are some functions we wrote in the last video that we'll need to update. So let's scroll up here. We're going to need our awake, our begin and our begin pour, and then we'll fill out all the ones we just wrote in. So we'll first need to get our splash particle. And this is going to be on a game object that's childed to our stream prefab. So instead of just get component, we're going to want to write get component in children. Then we have that. And then within our begin function, we're going to want to start that coroutine for updating our particle. So we'll say start coroutine, update particle. And then when we start this begin pour, we're gonna to wanna to store this coroutine for later. And we can do that just by writing pour routine equals, and there we go. So when we wanna end this very specific coroutine, we can use this pour routine variable. And then if we go down to begin pour, you'll remember that we set this to move position on both, but naturally once we begin the pour, we want to animate that ending position down to the ground. So we'll write animate to position, passing the index of one and our target position. And then we'll scroll down here to our end function, where this is gonna look similar to our begin, where we're gonna stop the coroutine instead of starting it, and we're just gonna pass in that pour routine. And then we'll be setting that pour routine again by calling in pour. And I think we could forego storing it, but just for consistency and having it just in case we need it in the future, I just store it. Now let's go down to end pour. 
where similar to our begin pour, we're going to have a while loop. But instead of just checking to see if the game object is active, we're going to be calling that has reached position function. And this is because we're going to destroy this object once the endpoint has left the origin of our bottle and then has hit the ground. So for pouring, and then we put the bottle above the threshold and it ends the pour, that end position is going to animate itself down to the ground. Once it reaches it, we're going to destroy the object. If we didn't do that, as soon as the pour ended, it would just destroy the object automatically and it would just disappear and wouldn't look very interesting. So we'll have our while loop and we'll put an exclamation mark here to say we want this to be false. So while we have not reached the position, we want to animate it. So we'll say has reached position. We'll pass in an index of zero and then our target position. We'll add our curly braces. And I can just use the target position here because we're going to be using the value that we stored in the begin position. We don't really have to, we don't really have to check for another target position. We know what that last value was when we were pouring, and we just want to animate that starting position to that last position that we stored. And for this, we do want to animate both the start and the end position because if the user ends the pour before that first point has reached the ground, it's just going to stop in midair. But what we want to do is if they've poured it and stopped, we want to have a nice continuous stream of both of these points going towards the ground. So that's why we're going to animate both the index of zero and the index of one. And we'll just be using that target position that we figured out previously. We'll want to put our yield return null within this while loop or it's going to crash everything. And once our starting point has reached the ground, we're going to want to destroy the object. So we'll write destroy game object. And this will prevent all of those streams from ending up in our scene. All right, now we just need to work on our animate to position and these other two functions. Let's scroll down some more. And this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to start with a vector three that we'll call current point. And we're going to be accessing our line renderer. We'll be calling get position on that line renderer and we'll be passing in our index. And that's just going to give us the current position of that index on our line renderer. We're then going to create another vector three that we're going to call new position. And we're going to be animating that current point from our line renderer to that target position. And we'll just be doing that using vector three dot move towards. So right vector three move towards. Our current value, which is our current point our target, which is our target position, and then the max distance we want it to move. And I just use time.delta time times 1.75. If you want this to move a little bit faster, you can up this value. And now that we found out the position we want it to move to, we need to actually set it. So we need to access our line render again, set position, pass in that same index value, and our new position. And since this is being called in a coroutine, it's going to give us a fairly smooth look. Now let's go down to has reached position, where the first thing that we're going to do is get the current position of our index and then compare that to our target position that we're passing in. So we'll say vector three, current position equals line render get position index. So this is similar to what we just did in animate to position. So we're getting the current position of the index. And we're saying, hey, does this position on the line renderer meet the position that we're trying to get it to? And then within this return statement, we'll just write current position equals equals our target position. And this is just going to return true or false, depending upon if this is an equal match. All right, last function. This is going to be pretty simple, similar to our begin pour, where we're going to have a while loop that says game object dot active self. We're going to be accessing our splash particle, getting the game object, the transform dot position, and we'll be sending it to our target position. Won't do anything fancy with that. And then we'll be reusing that has reached position again to know whether we want to show the particle or not. Naturally, as soon as we start pouring, we don't want to show the splash particle. We want to show it once that ending point first reaches the ground. So we'll have a local Boolean called is hitting. That'll say has reached position pass in the index of one for that end position, pass in our target position, and then we'll access that splash particle, the game object, and then we'll just set active. 
Usually when I'm working with particles, I have them on their own separate object, so I can just disable it if I don't want it anymore. It's a little bit more reliable and easier to do for me than trying to play and stop the particle system itself. So we'll say put in that is hitting boolean value, and then we'll copy and paste this yield return null so everything doesn't crash again. Paste that. And believe it or not, that's actually it for our stream script. We do need to call our npour within the pour detector, so let's do that before I forget. So we'll open up our start pour just in case to make sure that looks good. And it does. And then within our npour, we're going to access that current stream. We're going to call end on it. And then just to be clean a little bit, just to make sure this is all good, we'll set our current stream to null. All right, and that's it. Let's go back into Unity to see if we need to set anything else up, but I think this should be good. All right, now that we're back in Unity, our bottle looks pretty good. Let's just hit play and we'll see if this works. And that looks pretty good. We're getting our start, our end, our particle is in the correct place. And we're also getting those start and end animations where our ending point is animating down to the ground. And then once the pour is ended, we're animating that start point down to the ground as well. And I think that about does it for this video and this series. Thank you for watching. If you have any problems, questions, or maybe a thought for adding on to this project, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.